Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be a match between Beast and Snow for today, this week's, this month's patron cast. Bottom left, we've got a red Zerg player. It is Beast, and in the bottom right, we've got Snow, the blue Protoss player. So if you're watching this, the week of September the 10th, Thank you very much for supporting me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least $1 a month. That gives you the right to see this one month before anybody else. And if you're watching this in the month of October, hope you're enjoying the weather. And hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here five times a week with Brood War content. And hit that like button. Alright man, so I feel like Snow is fairly favored in this matchup. Against Beast, but Beast is an excellent Zerg player, and I feel like he can give Snow everything that he can handle. And if everything turned out the way that I thought it would, I would not be casting Starcraft because it would be super boring. Surprise is the spice of life. Anyway, three-player map, scouting the wrong direction. Here is the probe. Terry the Overlord, scouting the right direction. Yes. Yes, indeed, Terror the Overlord. You are going the right direction. Well done. Have a pat on the head. And then overpooling on the other side here is Beast. So, are we Nexus? No. What are... Snow, what are we doing here? Is Snow Nexus firsting? 200, 260, 270, 280, 300. Or is he just... He's just crazy late on the forge. I guess. Alright, so the forge is late, which is maybe a huge problem for Snow. Because this is a 12 pool. It's not a pool first, but it's also not a hatch first, which means you have to worry about lings pretty quickly here. I mean, forges don't take that long to build. Cannons don't take that long either. Probably going to have to delay your nexus. Maybe throw a gateway up here. Get some probes to cover until you can get a cannon up. Oh no, you know what? We're not delaying the nexus at all. Snow is not worried at even the tiniest of bits. Even the tiniest of bits here. And yeah, it's not a lot of Ling production out on the other side. It's one set of Lings, probably to get rid of this probe more than anything else. And you know what? I think Beast... Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's safe, right? It's just safe to go for, um, for the Overpool, where the Overlord comes out. The first Overlord you make comes out, and then the, the spawning pool is here, or anyway... Anywho, is he taking a quick third? Okay, well, at least he's taking a quick third. Or he's thinking about taking a quick third. He's hiding up here like he doesn't have the resources to build the hatch, but he totally does. Come on, beast. Come on, beast. Be a beast. You got this. All right, so third hatch coming in at three minutes, which I really like. And you know what? The cannon, I'm not going to say it's unnecessary because there are lings out. And the lings definitely could come by and get some free scouting off if you didn't have that cannon. But it feels like a bit of an overreaction just because it's only two lings, right? That said, this probe has been alive for a very long time. So recognizing, all right, this isn't a quick lair, right? I don't see a Hydralisk Den coming in or anything like that. Just, I'd like to see what this next level of tech is. Do we go for the lair? Do we throw down the Hydra Den? Do we not do any of those things? There's the lair timing. The probe sees it, and now the probe is pretty much okay with going home, but does continue to stick around, I guess, to make sure that that lair doesn't get canceled and it turns into a Ling Flood, which would actually be pretty hard to hold with a single cannon. And maybe a Zealot, right? Because we're just being greedy over here for Snow. We're probing super hard. Cybercore's coming up at 350. Not interested in teching up all that much. Already has 20 probes to 16 drones, which is normal at this stage. But yeah, Protoss just doing all it can to take that advantage and run with it. So Metabolic Boost coming in after the lair starts. We see that quite often in the current meta. This is an RJB replay. Part of a pack that he sent me a few months ago now, if not last year. I do appreciate RJB sending me this huge pack of replays. He calls it the uh, RJB Ultimate Replay Pack for Falcon Paladin. So be sure to check him out at RJB TV on YouTube here. Just search his name in the YouTube search bar. You'll find him. He does fastest map commentary, and he loves Brood War. He's very knowledgeable about it. I ask him questions about Brood War a lot. He just has a lot of depth of information and information about players, too. That is really nice to be able to get. And this probe is going to scout the third. Wow, this probe is getting some really nice information out here. I mean, the shields are coming back and everything. That's fantastic. Spire coming up. Stargate? Yep, Stargate warping in. Citadel of a Dune on the follow-up. 
Is it going to be for speed lots, or is it going to be as the probe finally dies? Because speed's done. Speed lots or for Dark Templar, usually just speed lots. While teching into the storm in this particular matchup. So, so far, so good. Everybody. So, yeah. If you're here, thanks for clicking on a Falcon Paladin video. It's good to have you around. Again, I've been doing Brood War content five times a week for a very long time now. I think it's coming up on five years that I've been doing this stuff. Maybe not as frequent as five days a week, but... I've been doing the Brood War content since then. It's been very fun. I love Brood War. I've played it. I haven't told this story in a while, but man. Big Warcraft 2 fan. Me and my buddies all really loved Warcraft 2. We played a lot of it on, you know, after school and on weekends and stuff. Because we were in high school at the time. And then we saw StarCraft announced in a gaming magazine. That's where we saw it. Was in a gaming magazine. And we were like, whoa. This, it's Warcraft in space. We didn't know anything about Warhammer, mind you. But is this so that overlord does die? Okay. The timing on the spire a little bit late because that third base came up, and as a result, Corsair gets a kill. Zealot wandering in. There's no static defense here at all. Anyway, so we counted down the days until StarCraft came out. We went to Target, we bought a single copy of the game on the day it was released. We went home, we burned eight copies of StarCraft, so we each had one. And I think I still have that burned copy of Brood War somewhere. I did end up purchasing the battle uh, the battle chest. Starcraft 1, Starcraft uh, Brood War, right, uh, from Walmart, like back in 2005 or something, so I did end up paying for it. But yeah, it's been, it's been a big part of my life for a very long time, and I'm glad I can cast it, and glad that people enjoy my casting, and it's all very, very wonderful. So we're getting Zealot Legs, we are getting a Templar Archives. Where the heck, are you seriously not investing in Sunkins at all, Beast? Okay, so this third base is in an immense amount of trouble all of a sudden. Full evacuation here, right? The drones gotta run for their lives. The Hydra really can't stand in fight. The zealots are like, I guess, sure, we can kill Tech. Let's get the Hydra Lisk then. I mean, the drones are coming back to work and they're fighting with these Zerglings, which I'm not sure I feel particularly great about here, dude. These zealots are mean. They got plus one attack. Drones are gonna die. The Hydras are getting some hits off, yes. There we go. Finally, one zealot goes down, but of the five that have showed up, only one have died so far. There's another one goes down. Not particularly microing excellently here, but doesn't lose a Hydra. Okay, that was good enough. Some of the Hydras are injured, but they're not dead, and that's what matters here. So it's 42 to 27 total workers. It is a three base to two base. Some extra cannons coming up here in case all those Hydras decide to wander over this way because Storm is not done. So we're going to need some cannons to defend against these Hydras in the time being. Uh, this zealot is still alive? What? I thought he got... Maybe it's a new one. He's got one kill. He's going to get two here. Oh, no, he doesn't. The Hydras kill him before he can get any more damage done. There is a Dark Templar on the way, but it's not like a mass Dark Templar thing. Not like four or five of them. I don't think we're going to see here. So what are we going to do? We're just going to drone it up. Yeah, drone it up. Get upgrades. Get the range upgrade for the Hydras. Get some Overlords to replace the ones that have died with the supply block and whatnot. Oh, no. Those extra cannons. Those are extra cannons that died. He canceled a couple extra cannons here. He's got three at the natural base, but he canceled two of them, recognizing there wasn't really an imminent threat of Hydra attack for now, and he could wait for Storm to finish, so that's what he's decided to do. So, man, a lot of Hydras here. I'm not sure if Beast is going for the somewhat modern, somewhat more of a 2020 thing, mass Hydra and nothing else. Maybe we go into Lurkers at some point. There's Lurker aspect. But who needs casters? Is what I like to call that particular strategy for Zergs and ZVP. I don't... I mean, in general, who wins a StarCraft game is who uses the casters better. I think it can often be kind of boiled down to that. And sure, it can look really good. It can make Zerg look unstoppable with mass Hydra with Lurker support. But I just feel better about Zergs and get Plagues off on Zealots. And Dark Swarm when there's Dragoon attacks, right? And that said, it looks like this is what Beast is going for, is the many, many Hydralisk play. Many, many Hydralisk play. Let's see if he goes for a Queen's Nest at all. That's part of what the Corsairs are doing, is checking. They're getting free scouts off here, man. There's not nothing to kill them when they come in to check if there's a Hive or a Queen's Nest or not. So, it is plus one Hydra. They've got the range upgrade. And... Trying to kill these Psy Templar while taking Storm to the face, but you know what? 
The High Templar died. That's a lot of dead Hydra bodies, but the High Templar are gone. That means the Zealots are not going to have as good a time as they want to here, and they're kind of forced to pull back. The High Templar are the great force multiplier here, right? Casters. Casters are a big freaking deal in the Brood Wars. So going into Singularity Charge, he does want to get some Dragoons. He recognizes that the this many Hydras means we're probably going to tech into Lurkers next of all. And dealing with Lurkers sort of requires Dragoons. Archons are pretty good at it. Obviously, High Templar storming them are pretty good too. But Dragoons are kind of your bread and butter against a Lurker comp. So they're going to try to kill that egg. No, they're going to try to get in here. But like, okay, you trapped a couple Hydras outside. But mm, Lurker Burrow. Nope, can't Burrow. That is just... That was an absolute surround and pound there by those zealots with plus two attack looking amazing we're pump now moving directly into dragoons here more high templar joining the party to replace the ones that died there's already a couple here and there are four that maybe we're thinking about making the journey across the map decided not to staying back a little bit here we do have a zealot kind of spazzing out a bit as well but i'm watching that production tab man and it does not seem like we are going into Hive tech at all, but snipe High Templar, High Templar die, High Templar die, and guess what? The Protoss has to move it back. So that's one thing that Beast is doing exceptionally well. He's just he's keeping the High Templar count low. It's kind of like how Protoss want to keep the tank count low. And this is Beast keeping the High Templar count low. He's just making 13 more Hydralisks. Uh, I mean, if Snow doesn't go into a third, then this two base style, or rather this three base style from Beast, really can work. It really can work here. Dodging the Storms as well as he can. Oh, Storms kind of hitting Zealots a little bit. At the same time, though, Beast in full retreat. Too much Storm, too many Dragoons, too many Zealots. It's 131 and 97 total supply. The worker count is even, but that army value is so much bigger. So much bigger for Snow. So Mass Hydra does defeat this particular comp of the Protoss, but guess what? Storm changes that whole equation. And when there's Storm around, then suddenly this is not going to be enough. I don't know. I don't feel good about it for Beast here. If these eggs, these eggs I don't think are going to finish. Lurker's trying to flank in from the right side. Corsairs are trying to kill every one of these Overlords that are providing detection against the couple of DTs that are in the house. They might already be dead, but you have to have Overlords around it just in case anyway. So, the, oh my gosh, these Lurker's finished. Wow. So they're going to go ahead and try to kill a couple Zealots here. Uh, largely just kind of died to Zealots, however. So Lurker, that is like eight Lurkers down. That is a big, big expense of gas. This group on the right side just gives up. They're not microing whatsoever. The Hiders are trying to kill these Corsairs, but by golly, they seem kind of functionally immortal. One of them does go down. Two of them go down. And it's 109 to 63 supply. Yeah, that engagement went pretty well for Snow. And he's getting a third base behind it. By that, I mean he already has a third base behind it. So that's excellent. Dragoons aren't super great versus plus two Hydras. Uh, that's a dead High Templar here. Uh, sniping Observers is also pretty incredible, but the Archon is too juicy a target. So the Observer does manage to escape there. Thinking about taking a fourth now as Beast and making just more Overlords to replace the ones that keep dying, but the bigger problem is he's down 158 total supply. It does not seem to be working particularly well for Beast here. Snow is one of the elite Protoss. So, I mean, there's no shame in struggling against somebody like this. He's going into Mutas against a group of three Corsairs. Which, all right. Oh, look, we've seen the Muta tech switch at this stage of the game win against Protoss. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's just not something I've really enjoyed watching. Not something I feel like succeeds at a good clip. So, here are the Mutalisks, which Snow did not know were coming. He had no idea that there were going to be Mutalisks about. So he immediately starts rebuilding his Corsair group. He's got one remaining, maybe another one on the map somewhere, but I think that's it. He's kind of kind of pull back. He's got to pull back, pull back because it doesn't have the Corsair group to deal with. You know, a group of nine Mutalisks, which he's got here, right? Dragoons trade pretty well against Mutas, especially if they have plus two attack and plus one armor. So he sniped the High Templar. You try to avoid the storms. You hope the High Templar storm the Protoss more than they storm your, your units, but with someone whose control is as good as Snow's is, I'm not sure that's a viable request to make, right? Uh, that said, it did lose one Mutalisk. Everybody's fairly bruised, though. So just trying to snipe as many probes as possible, reducing this economic advantage that exists. 
Cu oh, one couple more mutas die there. Couple more mutas die there, but we're back for more. We're gonna eat another storm. The Corsair getting splash damage off of this group is a big deal. Because again, everybody is so hurt. These are extremely injured, extremely hurt mutalisks. There are two Corsairs now. Nine Hydras in production, and Beast is getting a fourth. So it's 143 to 102 supply. Ratio-wise, it's not as bad for Beast as it was about two or three minutes ago, but it's still about 50 supply difference, 56 at the moment, if I'm doing math correctly, which they say you shouldn't do math when you're casting, and I think I agree with them when they say that. Mutas trying to come from the backside, harass more of these probes. You know, probe count getting reduced. It's down to 50. That said, Beast only has 42. Beast is just, he's forced to put so much into overlords here. And that is the power of the Corsair opening, is it forces, well, the overlords to stay home. And even if they do, they die a lot. And that forces the Zerg to replace overlords that die. And that means they're spending resources on overlords instead of on things like, I don't know, Hydralisks and maybe Defilers and stuff. So Snow decides he's got enough of an army here, right? He decides we're going to go. Plus two attack. Plus one armor. The Hydras are plus two attack. Almost plus one carapace, but not quite. We're not going to have it, I don't think, for this upcoming battle. That said, Snow doesn't seem particularly interested in engaging here in the middle of the map for whatever reason. I don't know what he's up to here. Uh, now he's heading back up. So, I don't know. He's worried about a Ling run by or something. Maybe he, his intuition told him there's something down there, but there wasn't. Intuition's not always right. And I just, it just number to number here, right? Just visually looking at the amount of Protoss with the amount of Zerg, it's just not enough. And he's making four Hydras at a time. Seven Hydras at a time, which is something that Zerg can do at this stage of the game. That is extremely difficult for Protoss to pull off. But look at him, he's got a fourth base he's working on the right side now. Yeah, I mean, the Mutas are all dead, and I think they know it. Yep, just turning back to die, trying to maybe save the lives of two of their friends here, but... Yeah, just kind of marching in. Couple lurkers aren't going to do much, especially without Dark Swarm. The Dragoon just picked them from range. Zealots honestly do okay against them, too. The Storm is good, and good even if there's not any Dark Swarm at all. Obviously. So Beast is going for it. He's coming from the top side. He's coming from the right side. And the left side here. Zealots getting on top of the Hiders. There aren't a ton of Zealots here, but there are more ready to send out as necessary. Beast is being extremely cautious with this attack that he wants to launch in the middle of the map here against Snow. He's trying to dodge storms. He's trying to provide a pre-split here so that one storm can't kill eight or nine Hydralisks, right? He's coming in. This left side looking pretty good for Beast. But the top side goes terribly. Zealots, Dragoons, oh my. 173 to 108 total supply. Just making speed lots now, five at a time. I guess there are also three High Templar at a time being produced. Probably don't want to make Archons in the situation because Hydras are pretty good against the Archon. Not as good against the High Templar. They're a better bang for the buck here with this particular mass Hydra enemy that you're facing at the moment. So storm up, dodge the storm. Zealot's getting chewed up there. Okay, that's what you want. Beast is honestly expressing a ton of patience right now. I think a lot of other Zerg players would have kind of just come from all sides and tried to dodge the storm as well as he can, but you know that Snow's ridiculously patient too, and every storm is being placed with absolute precision and love and care? Yeah, man, the storms are just... It looks One storm kills at least two Hydras, maybe a Lurker. Hydra's kind of trickling in here and there, but that's not enough. Good game. Beast taps out, and Snow is your winner there in just under 19 minutes of play. That was, my goodness. That was an absolutely, absolutely incredible, incredible ZVP. Well done, Snow, for conquering Beast here. Just a lot of patience from these two players. Uh, plus three, plus three, uh, attack. You've got three armor, got three armor, and yeah, just storms. A lot, a lot of storms. And just expanding patiently. No Ling run buys, no defilers. 
And yeah, I can see why this particular strategy fell out of favor among Zerg players, right? This is from 2020. And I feel like current Zerg players are not as eager to go Hydra Lurker and nothing else against a skilled Protoss player like Snow. <laughs> so man, Snow didn't lose a building. Maybe he maybe he killed one of his own or two of his own. Maybe that'll show up. 156,000 to 117. Ouch. For Beast here, 318 to 200 in the favor of Beast. A 2 to 1 ratio here, kill death ratio for Snow, and that is okay if you're only being outproduced by like 100 units. Yeah, lost one building, and I think that was a cannon that was killed by Snow. I mean, Beast didn't lose any buildings either. This is interesting. A 20 minute game where nobody lost a building to the enemy player. Very interesting indeed. And just outspending the Protoss by just about maybe 2,500 minerals, which is, again, is not enough. So, bam. Very... <laughs> ah, very, very interesting stuff there uh, of Snow. Just He did what he needed to do. It was very clinical, man. It was an extremely, extremely clinical play. And that gets wins. So GG, Snow, Beast, better luck next time. And that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.